we've got uh, so we've talked all the components of the obvious connection to the schools and conferences that are being most impacted and affected. But by extension, we talked a little Notre Dame with a Notre Dame fan. And now we got Eric as a Oregon fan. And now that leaves them kind of on, on an island as a power program brand that's stuck up there in the Northwest kind of by themselves along with Washington to a certain extent. So Eric, what do you think about this? I, mean, I don't think we're stuck up here. We're pretty happy. But uh, okay. yes, we are, you know, I, I don't want to, I agree with all the people concerned with athletes traveling that much, not just, oh, poor athlete, but just what, what I mean, what happens to like the value of like the, like, I don't want to pay for a ticket to go across the country to see, if, you know, <laughs> us play Rutgers or USC play Rutgers or whatever. Um so I'm not, but also like more pressing than that, I'm just like concerned with the conference. Like what, what is Oregon going to do? Because they don't have a ton of options. I mean, the Big Ten is an option. Mm -hmm. And then other than that, I mean, trying to add to the Pac-12, I don't know what you're going to pick up to make it. I mean, with USC, especially with their projected strength right now, like what we just lost as a conference is, is devastating, you know? I think I think that's true. I think Oregon has a benefit, a a we'll call it the beauty mark that other schools in the conference who don't know what's next I, that they don't have. Yeah, Oregon has the facilities. Oregon has Phil Knight. Oregon is going to be attractive to whether it's the Big Ten and whether Oregon whether you want to go to the Big Ten or not is you know a whole other question. But there will be suitors for Oregon that there yeah. won't be for the other schools. You know, no one's going to be clamoring to go sign up Arizona State. They're just no. not. No, and I think that's why I think the more I'm processing this, which is kind of, it's a lot. I've been thinking about the bowl games and the travel right. and the rivalries. And I, what does this mean? Um, I think we essentially, like, if Oregon wants to stay, I mean, I guess this would mean Oregon turning against Klyavkov, right? Like this, this would be, if Oregon left, Klyavkov would be in a whole mess of trouble. I imagine. Be out of a job pretty much. Um, the look and, and, and Oregon is a bit of a wild card um, because the, the, the president of the university at, at Oregon tends to be, unique Still. <laughs> yeah you know Still, and, and I, I, right you know look and i've talked to him and done interviews and and mark knows you know we've talked about it when they went through the covid things and you know there's a there's a a, a zoom meeting with the media and everyone's got on you know they're they're they had an ad they had ray anderson from arizona state um they had on a player rep they had on a coach rep and and they had Michael on and, you know, he's got his tweed jacket on and, you know, it's like, uh, you know, and, and his point was, we're OK. This was back when they were talking about canceling the season. He was like, we're OK with it. The players will spend their time going to the library and studying more. And uh -huh. it's like, yeah, come on, you know, back here in reality land, you know. Um, so but but yet he holds clout within the Pac-12 because he was one of Klyovkov's guys early on to head some of the subcommittees to look at how things were going. And that was kind of a holdover from the Larry Scott era. So, you know, I, I, again, I think Oregon has some, some chips in its back pocket that other schools don't have. It's just a matter of how they want to utilize them. Yeah. Where, I mean, someone's going to pick us up, right? Someone's going to hit on us. It's a matter of what you want. It's a matter of what Oregon wants out of it. How, no, much money, exactly, how much money? How much money does Oregon want? How much you know? Well, it's, as much as uh, Shell is, you know, he, he's very Eugene. He fits in great here. Um, <laughs> but uh, Rob Mullins, our athletic director, right. is very aggressive. Yes, and has an excellent track record at Oregon and I believe Kentucky before before that. Um, there so are I schools think... that are going to be left on the side of the street when the Pac-12, you know, starts to, and when. It, it's a game of musical chairs, yeah, right? At this point, and, and and who can get what? And it's not going to surprise anyone if the music stops in Arizona and Arizona State don't have chairs. I mean, they should be Mountain West schools at this point, anyway. 
Well, they probably should be, and you can see Colorado they, going they used, to the Big Twelve. They used to be. I mean, they were in the right. WAC before they became. They joined the Pac-10 in 1978. The Colorado, WAC, Colorado the used to be part of the old Big Eight before it became the Big Twelve. You know, so it's it's you know we talked about it earlier when when I mentioned that I you know did that sit down with John Curry at Wake Forest talking about all these shifts and he said you know you have to be of a certain age to remember there used to be the southwest conference and the pack eight and the big eight and you know so on and so forth and everything shifted and college football survived it's just it, it's pain some some of the moves are painful sometimes for those of us who kind of get used to things the way they are does this seem that you guys watch more have watched more college football than i have um is this a bigger like siege? Because this feels monumental. All the things going on with oh, NIL yeah. and the, is this bigger than any change that occurred maybe in your lifetime yes. in the sport? Yes, because again, the bowl system's dead. The Rose mm-hmm. Bowl's dead. The pac 12s probably dead. I mean, this this really is a death knell for so many of the things that we've loved and cherished and have gotten used to over several decades. I mean, Texas and Oklahoma was a move where okay, you know, you're seeing the chessboard changing but we were still in an in-between place. Like we could have gone in a different direction. We could have gone another way, but this, this, like there's no, this is a point of no return. Like the, you're, there's no saving the pre-existing structure. You know that you're going to have either four 16 team super conferences or a couple 32 team or maybe 24 team super duper conferences. There's no turning back after this. Let me, let me add on to what Matt just said, being, being the oldest guy in the room here and remembering back in the days when, you know, they had to banish the Southwest conference because every team in there was corrupt. Um, (laughs) And, um, you know, they just had to set fire to the entire conference and and the big eight. But the thing is you move, a lot of those schools moved to the big eight. Some of them moved to the sec, you know, schools moved around. Right. But you still had, the Cotton Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, the Rose Bowl, you still had all of those elements that existed. And I agree, while we don't know what's going to happen to the Rose Bowl, if there is no Pac-12 and the Big Ten is, you know, 24 teams or whatever it is, I don't know how you salvage those things. So I think the I think the change that is going to come from this over the last over the next two to three years will make it the biggest change that we have seen in college sports. Hey, yeah, Matt, we know you need to take off. Um, is there anything uh, else you'd like to hit us with before um, we see you next time? Well, I just I think the main thing to leave to leave you with is something I briefly alluded to at the beginning. When Mike Bone courted Lincoln Riley, was a Big Ten move part of the plan? That's the question I want to see answered. And uh, it's really going to be one of the major talking points uh, and discussion points of the next several days. So I'm just going to leave you with that. And obviously at Trojan's Wire, I mean, hey, you know, my hair's all messed up. Like I did yard work. Then I saw Wilner's tweet and like, you know, just two hours of straight riding. I know I'm not going to eat or drink a single thing for the next right. 10 hours. So it's off to uh, writing more stories and doing more media hits. So thanks, Mark, for having me. I really appreciate Matt, it. Matt, knowing all that, and I already was going to say, you know, we appreciate your time and your expertise. Thank you so much for Absolutely. being here, Matt. Trojans Wire, everyone. Head on over there. Check out Matt's work. And great to meet you, Tony. Great to talk to you. You too, Matt. We'll talk soon. Thank you. All right, Tony. Uh, likewise, uh, however much time you have or don't have for us. I'm good right now. I canceled my plans for the night because once this hit, I was like, man, I got a lot of work to do. So we're, we're, we're good. If we need to take more calls or whatever, I'm good for a while longer. About 800 folks on the line. Appreciate y'all being here at the voice of college football. Thank you so much for that. Eric, uh, anything else before we let you go and keep moving on? Uh, yeah, I mean, the last thing I was going to point out before Matt jumped in or jumped off, I guess, um, just the, again, just processing all of this, the, the biggest loss I see, like in terms of tradition are just like the, the rivalries that you lose, Mm -hmm. you know, if, if Oregon goes to the big 10, which I assume they're meeting as we speak, or if there's not already a plan in place, there's, I mean, they're, they're running around with their hair on fire, the, all the people in the athletic department if they do move to the big 10, we just automatically lose UW and Oregon state as rivalries. Hypothetically. I mean, they could do something where they schedule them every year, but that's kind of how rivalries 
die if if I'm not mistaken. So that's that's just sad to me. And um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about this a lot before I know one way or the other how I feel about it. We all are. We're all processing it, you know, minute yeah. by minute since the news broke. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Eric.